life. It's an incredible thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing and we're all blessed to have one of these organic structures that's got touch, taste, we can see, we can feel, we can love. You're tasting that samosa right now and you know, we, we, we sometimes take for granted the simple things in our life. But each and every one of us has a gift, a gift to share with other people, with our community, a gift to share with one another. But we have a problem in society, we have a problem with, with depression, with anxiety, with suicide. We have people who are lost. These people are told that they need to toe the line, they need to f keep it safe. We're told that we need to play the game in a certain way, that we've got to get that job, we've got to work really hard, we've got to aim for retirement, we've got to get ourselves in debt. And we play this game and we get lost. I'm here to say that life's not about that, life's about adventure. Life's about taking risks, about getting out of your comfort zone, about challenging yourself to do things, to inspire others, to let them follow in your footsteps. I started the Human Excellence Project um, about 10, 11 months ago now, shortly after a traumatic event in my own life. My dad, my dad rang me five years ago, and it was one of them phone calls none of us want to take. He said to me, Paul, the cancer's back, and this time it's terminal. And I was 40 years of age at that time, and I thought I had everything, everything in place. And as I dropped to my knees, and I was crying my eyes out, and I was like, not again. I lost my best friend in my teenage years. My stepdad was murdered when I was early 20s. And I'd lost touch with, with life and society. And here I was at 40, and I was about to lose my dad, my everything, my hero. It really took me on a, on a powerful journey of self-development. When I got that news, the blinkers came off. I got to see the society I was growing up in. I got to see that my uncles and aunties and my family, and through no fault of their own, were following this system where they were all aiming for this ending. They were drinking too much. They were eating the wrong foods. They were surrounding themselves with the wrong people. And then I looked at my friends around me in the football club I was playing in, and it was the same story. There was no plan, everyone was winging it. Then I looked at the people who were working for me, I had a building company, and I looked at the guys who were on, on our site, and they were struggling with depression, anxiety. They were addicted to one thing or another, or alcoholics. Their families were falling apart, and I looked around and seen this was happening everywhere. And the final thing I did is look at myself. And I wasn't happy with what I'd seen. I was overweight at the time, I was eating the wrong foods, I was drinking way too much, I was spending too much time away from my family. I was aiming for money constantly, thinking that would bring me happiness. Over these five years, my dad's cancer just got worse and worse, and it took the things off him that we all take for granted. One thing, it, it took food off him, it took taste. It took, it took his most precious possession, his speech. He always had the right answer to everything. He was an amazing guy. Unfortunately, on the 8th of August last year, my dad lost his battle with cancer. But over that four years, we, we, we learned some new tips and techniques to improve my own life and get me ready for his death. My dad learned to meditate, he learned yoga. And on that day, he knew he was about to pass. He gave us all a fist pump. We went in, we gave him a hug, we told him we loved him. He put his hands on his chest and he meditated to his death. And it was one of the most powerful moments of my life. I was so proud to see him pass over with such dignity. When I came back from the UK, 
I, um, I, I wrote the words, the Human Excellence Project, and I thought, I can't do this no more. I can't play this game. I thought, I've got to try and empower others to go on the journey that I went on. The journey of self-empowerment, the, the journey within. I thought, how am I going to do this? The mentors that I surrounded myself with, they had one thing in common. They had a morning routine that was beneficial to themselves. And I thought, right, I'm going to do this. So I, I committed to doing two hours for me every morning. So I got up at 4 a.m. And I was getting exercise in. I was getting nutrition in, meditation in. And then I would jump into cold water. And it started with just myself. Slowly, friends started to join me. And it started to have an impact in people's lives. I could see that by getting up early and taking control of your day, things started to work out for, for you. As the months went on, the weeks went on, should I say, it started to grow. I posted it on social media. I started a, a, a Facebook page. And people would come down with their own problems, with their own traumas. And the thing that happened was magic. They would come down, they would meditate with us, they would jump into the ocean together and all think we're crazy. But then afterwards we'd go for a coffee and we would share our traumas sober. And then the people who would come, they would realize that it wasn't just them, it was, it was everybody else. We were all sharing this thing. Life is tough, but we need to take control of it. You need to have self-belief. This morning's dip is my 307th consecutive dip. I knew I had to commit to this so that people had somewhere to go. Someone would always be there when they turned up. And over the past 10, 11 months, We've had more than 4,000 people jump in the ocean with us. We're having healing every day. Last month, in the depths of winter, on a freezing cold morning, we had 60 people turn up, each of them with their own story. But these are strong people. These are the people that got up. They didn't press the snooze button. They didn't roll back over into their warmth. They got up and attacked their day. They then share it on social media and invite their friends to come. We've got a community of strong people. The Human Excellence Project is built upon the seven human needs. The first is certainty. We need to feel comfortable, secure, stable, protected in our lives. We get this by knowing where we're going and what we're doing. I'm a life coach and I teach people how to have a clear vision. Because what I've noticed, people who are depressed and anxious, they're lost. What does that mean? They haven't got a map for their own life. So by giving them this map for their own life and giving them a clear vision, they know where they're going. They're not lost anymore. And then they commit to themselves. They get great growth from that. Then we need significance. We need to feel important. We need to feel special, we need to feel respected. Then we need variety in our lives, we need to be challenged, take risks. We need, to, we need to get excitement in our lives and some surprise. Connection and inclusion is one of the most important things that we do. To bring this group together and for everyone to feel part of it. It's one of the most powerful things. People have got somewhere to go. Loneliness is one of the biggest killers. We need to invite people to start joining communities and start to open up. Stop suppressing what they're hiding and start to share with each other. We need love. Recently we had a guy um, who's close to Inclusion Solutions, David Taylor, come down for a dip. David was suffering with a brain tumour. He was worried about his operation. We invited him down to do breath work with us and meditation. And for the two weeks prior to his dip, he was, having, he was having these seizures. But when he came down to us, they went from 20 a day to two a day. And he put it down to the love and connection that he got from the group. It was powerful. 
His operation went incredible, incredibly well. We focus on growth, developing, learning, strengthening ourselves, learning from each other, from each other's skills. But getting out of your comfort zone is where you need to grow. We don't learn anything when we stay within the things we know. And then finally, contribution, to give. To give without receiving. To leave your mark and to be of service to other people. It's a massive part of what we do. I'd like to introduce you to two of our members. These, we've had so many members now, but these are two big stories for me. Annalise joined us back in December 2018. She came down, the first thing she done, she came up to me and she said, why are you doing this, you're mad. I said, you'll see, you'll feel it soon. And she jumped into the ocean at Hillary's Boat Harbour and we swam to the beach. And then we went and shared a coffee and then she opened up and she drove from Kalamunda every day. She'd been on antidepressants for seven years. She was struggling with things that had gone on in her own life. But within a month, she came off them antidepressants. She started to take control of her day. She committed to herself. She's grown so well over the, over the past few months. And now she's in a loving relationship. She's not doing any, any counseling now or seeing any therapists. She's doing all the work herself. She even teaches her kids to meditate and do mindfulness in the school that she works in. She's amazing. Then there's Keith. Keith is a 31-year-old Irish man who struggled with debilitating anxiety and depression for many years. Coming from a tough background, having a lot of trauma in his life, he messaged me through Facebook and he was saying, Paul, I need this in my life. I need to be included in something that means something. He'd been suicidal in his past. And it took a few to and fro's with text messages and then he couldn't come down because his anxiety was so bad. But the day he did, which was only about seven weeks ago now, it changed his life forever. He jumped in the ocean with us, we swam to the beach and then he felt that he wasn't judged and he opened up and shared his story. Within five days, he sent me a message and the message said, thank you very much, Paul, for the ice bath we had done and the bush walk. And he said, during the breath work, he said it was the first time he told himself that he'd loved himself and that that was okay. And then since then, he's now looking to study to help kids deal with their own traumas. It's a powerful group, powerful group of change. We're focusing on mental health. It seems to be a major problem we have in society. So we've been doing, every two weeks we're doing um, free men's mental health events where we're inviting men to come down to learn not only information about what's going on with mental health but also we teach them new tools, new tips, new techniques, meditation, breath work, loads of different things to take into their everyday life. And at the end of every event we invite them down to the beach the next day. The guys who've been coming down have seen massive change and there's not a day goes by now that I don't get a message saying this has changed their life. Myself and my partner Melanie have funded this whole project ourselves for the past 12 months. And we're looking for funding, we're looking to get into corporate bodies, we want to get up to the FIFOs and help as many people to become included, to start believing in themselves so they can get this massive change in their lives. We're also looking to start doing teenage camps inspire youngsters by setting up a mentor group. We've got some incredible people joined our group now. We've got multi-millionaire businessmen who want to give their time for free to these teenagers, so we're going to do camps and we're going to teach them that's cool to do what we do. Joe Dispenza says it well, that thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And what you think and what you feel is who you become. We're all in charge of what we think and what we feel. But it takes courage to get up in the morning and come and do this. I say all of you come tomorrow morning. 5.15 a.m. Hillary's Boat Harbour, where we'll do a short meditation, we'll jump in the ocean, and then we'll help you change your life.
Thank you very much.